Alrighty guys, so in this game, uh, I ended up having a pretty good game. There weren't a lot of mistakes that were made in this game by other players, except one player here at the end, and it was pretty obvious that whoever this uh, player is, they're just new to the game. Um, uh, they're just they're just really new, so it's not too hard to um, give a lot of leeway for players that you know are are new who kind of make uh, little mistakes that they shouldn't make. But long and short of it, uh, we'll get to that. So in this game, uh, the plane uh, more or less kind of came right down through here. And so I realized I really like going to San Martin, and so I head up to San Martin, and I know there's not going to be a lot of players. In fact, I only I, I knew one other player was over here on my right that I was able to see uh, coming down in the parachute. Excuse me. The reason I like San Martin so much is it, it's centrally located, lots of roads, you can get to vehicles, plus... Uh, there are a lot of warehouses, and so what I like to do on Miramar is I like to come to San Martin, especially when I know that there's not going to be a lot of people here because I'm going to get a ton of really good things. Uh, and in this game, I did. Um, I end up getting level 3 helmet, level 3 backpack. Um, I had a level 2 uh, vest. But I picked up a, a SCAR, an SKS, and I was able to trick them both out. Um, found an 8-scope, 4-scope, you know, extended mags. I mean, I, I have found everything I really, really needed. So we're going to go ahead and kind of fast forward because nothing happens here in San Martin except me just kind of getting a whole bunch of goodies. So we're going to see this is where the map is going to end up being. So what I want to do is actually grab as much as I can. And what I want to do is get over here into uh, the mountain range right next to El Pozo. I do not want to go into El Pozo. There's no point. The only thing I'm really concerned about is maybe uh, getting to the hills here. And maybe I can pick somebody off coming out of El Pozo. And I end up seeing one guy, but uh, unfortunately, um, he was too far away, so I didn't even waste my time taking the shot. All right, so we're going to rewind just a little bit so you can kind of see what happened. So that circle finally hits. Here comes the next circle, and I saw this guy way off in the distance. I leave him alone. So I found a truck. I jump into the truck, and I start taking off. Now, I really, really like the circle the southern circles uh anytime there's a circle down here uh and i know it's going to be a southern game rather than a northern game i get excited because it's a, it to me it's a lot more fun because the terrain is a lot uh it's a lot better i think it's at more advantageous there's more cover to me it's more fun uh when it's northern circles it's really more or less just okay who's got a eight eight scope and uh all right, well, you, you got sniped. So it sort of is what it is, but regardless. So I've booked it down this entire way. I'm coming up through here. And all that's really happening at the moment, and uh, I actually kind of I want to give a shout-out to uh, Jaws because I wanted to come up to this mountain range. While I'm doing that, here comes Broken Condor. He starts to light me up. I backtrack to get behind the truck to get some cover. And Jaws, Jaws swoops in and takes this guy out. So when I hear the UMP going off, that's when I know, like, okay, make a break for it. Get in the truck. So that's what I do. I get into the truck, and I get out of there. And uh, I just back up to these uh, little houses here get healed up and basically what else happens at this point is uh, this guy is over here in this little mountain range and he comes up and he and Jaws end up getting into a fight and uh, Jaws wins so Jaws had a pretty good game this game he uh, took out a bunch of people so once Jaws gets that guy down I end up taking one uh, shot at Jaws when he makes himself uh, seen over on this side but I don't hit him, and the circle starts to come in, so both of us just kind of disengage. 
and uh, we make a break for it uh, to get to the circle. So here is where the new circle is going to be and it's right on the cusp of me so we're going to fast forward a little bit so the circle is now coming down I'm still in this area because I know I don't need to rush and I really want to know where this next circle is going to be I know it's not I'm probably not going to be in the next circle so the only thing I'm really curious about at this point is where exactly is it going to be right there is where I took that shot and unfortunately um it ends up being down here. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, this guy, that's Yukon. Uh, Ezekiel. He's coming down over on the other side, so he makes it. So, due to a lot of these guys who are in the end here, they're all up here. So, here's where the next circle is. This is both good and bad. It's good because I definitely can make it, you know, that's not going to be the issue, but it's figuring out what's the best way to approach this. Now, I saw an airdrop come over uh, in this area. So what I want to do is I want to get over to this side. This side is going to have more cover than over here. There's a bit of a gap here. So what I want to do, and I knew that there were people over here, and I had seen a couple people over on this side. Um, but I thought that there was going to be less people. It was going to be easier for me to sort of advance to get down to the circle because I wanted to come at it from this angle right here. I didn't want to come down through here. So I run down this hill. Uh, well, I'm down here somewhere. And so I'm coming down through this hill. I'm cutting across. And I have an encounter with Frejette. Uh, here in a minute. So I'm running up the hill. Frigette is coming down the hill. And he's kind of looking around. And he actually drops down over this ledge. And then he kind of stops. And he can hear my footsteps. So he actually did a good job in kind of hearing me and throwing a uh, grenade my direction. The problem is I <laughs> it didn't hit me. and I'm able to get Frejet down so start to take damage from the blue zone so definitely no time to raid but at this point for after hitting San Martin I didn't really need to get anything off of anybody I had plenty so I make it down to the blue circle get down here always try to get into the shadows if I can uh, I go ahead and heal up and you can see where this next circle is going to end up being. And again, uh, it's it's a very kind circle. Uh, I know I'm definitely going to be able to make it at this point, so I'm not worried about that. I know that there. I mean, there's nine of us left, and so this is actually a pretty big area for there to be nine people. Uh, if you look at the size now. Everybody basically knows at this point that there's nobody down here in the water. At least there won't be. But there could be somebody on this bridge, which would make a ton of sense. So I'm not showing it, um, but from my point of view, um, I'm using my scope, and I'm constantly looking at that bridge, thinking I might be able to pick somebody off um, at that distance. Uh, I, but it turns out there's nobody there. So we start to get down here. And I don't know who, I'm going to show this guy, this is a little bit of a mistake. I mean, it's a little bit, um, but I was watching him because during the game, um, you know, I was watching the replay and um, th there's kind of a funny firefight. He's actually shooting his gun a bunch, trying to make someone who's chasing him think that there's multiple people over there which was a good move but watch how many times this guy switches weapons and all I really want to say is pick a weapon because I, I, I don't know um, w w what it is that you're really trying to do here um, yeah here we, we begin the, the, the dance of picking a weapon <laughs> I mean I I <laughs> Either you need to get into a position where you can pick one of your weapons, so if you can get into a position where it makes sense to have out your sniper rifle, 
great. Uh, otherwise, get out your M16, you know, and here's the thing, we're getting into a smaller circle. So when you're getting into a smaller circle, the odds are you're going to want your close quarters weapon out. Um, if you've got an assault rifle, that's the weapon you want to have out. You want to sort of switch to your sniper rifle because the last thing you want to do is sort of spring on somebody and you have the wrong weapon out. So whatever your close quarters weapon is, that's the one you want to have out. But this guy just cannot make up his mind. So, uh, yeah, so he ends up getting into, and he continues that on for about another 60 seconds where he just can't quite figure out what it is that he wants to do but he ends up getting into a fight with hydro here and uh, hydro ends up taking him out now sloppy man has worked his way down from the top there and he's taken out several people along the way he actually had a really good game now the one person who was playing a style that is very similar to me was puff the penguin puff did a great job of using the circle um, being in a position, liking the position that he was in, and then just kind of sticking with it. And he was just going to let people just kind of shoot each other. Um, he was going to let each other, you know, everybody just kind of fight amongst themselves, and he was just going to end up cleaning up. And that's what Puff did. So Puff ends up having a really, really good game because he's just letting everything unfold um, and not trying to you know not trying to get into a fight unless he knows that he's got the advantage so he's like all right i'm just gonna let these guys just kind of duke it out in every direction so that's the fight between puge and high drop um <laughs> and uh puge just ends up chucking grenades and everything else and the disadvantage for puge here Pudge 33 is uh, he ends up taking damage from the blue zone and he goes down pretty quick. High drop almost gets taken out by the blue zone. He had one more second and he was done. Sloppy man ends up making short work of Ain't Real. They had a long firefight in this game and uh, the blue zone ends up kind of hurting them. But now Sloppy's running into here. And Puff is waiting to clean up and just takes him out really, really quick. So Puff just did a really good job in kind of moving into positions that he knew he was going to be uh, having an advantage. And I don't like getting into buildings, but when you are in a map where obviously you can tell where the circle is, lots of buildings to take advantage of. Definitely get into a building if you can where you're going to have an advantage. So that means being on the second floor of a big building like this. So while all of this is going on, I've really just kind of slowly made my way down to here. Now, I do not want to get into this building. Uh, I don't want to get into that building because it's, you're, it's basically a lone building. It's off by itself. So I can't really get in and out of it without... Uh, being seen now I saw Alex run across there and so I started firing at Alex uh, I hit him but I wasn't able to get him down and um, Alex is the guy I'm talking about that is obviously new to the game so Alex ends up running into this building and pretty much that's where Alex hangs out so as this game starts to unfold a little bit more here comes the blue zone Puff starts to take a little bit of damage from the blue zone, but he knows that he's really close to the next circle, so it's not going to be uh, a big ordeal, and he's trying to wait to see if he sees movement from anybody. So, again, Puff did uh, a really good job this game and just letting things sort of unfold. So, he goes ahead and drops down here. No big deal. He knows he can make it. Uh, he knows he's going to have enough uh, health and he ends up getting into a quick fight here with High Drop. High Drop ends up jumping down. And unfortunately for him, he climbs over this wall and gives off too much noise. And he ends up getting taken out. So I'm over here on this side and now I hear what's happened. I just heard this fight. I know the direction that it came from. 
So I chuck a grenade over in this area, and lo and behold, the response is, uh, <laughs> Puff ends up having a ton of grenades, because he's just chucking a whole bunch of them over here. And he just threw them everywhere. None of them got really near me or anything. I didn't take any damage. And so Puff ends up moving up, but if you notice here, I am in uh, amongst uh, a number of bushes. Uh, I'm very well hidden. Um, Puff it, it knows the general area that I probably am, but he's not 100% sure where I am. So um, he ends up moving up, and when I see him move, uh, that's where I know he's going to end up. He's coming in right there in between. So I just wait for it. And I'm able to get Puff down really, really quick. So, Puff, if you see this, you played a really good game. Uh, you had uh, good strategy all in all. You just got a little bit unlucky there uh, with me not knowing exactly where I was. So, here's where we get to sort of the mistake in this game. And, and this is going to end up being Alex. Now, Alex, first of all, has a level 1 helmet. So... Probably hasn't done a lot of looting, because if he had, he probably would have found um, at least a level 2 helmet. I chuck another grenade, by the way. So, here's the situation that I find myself in. I'm heads up, and I'm down here below. And I know that there really won't be anybody over in this area, but I'm just double-checking. Because I'm positive that there's somebody, and they're right up here. So... What I'm thinking is that it's possible that they're behind this rock over here. And at one point, I actually pulled up my map. And once I pulled up the map and I kind of saw where the circle was, I started to pick out, okay, there's a number of different things. And I was able at, what, at one point to kind of get up a little bit over here on the side. And I saw that this was a uh, sort of a trash bin. And I thought, you know, there's a really good chance that that guy is actually in that bin. Um, so what I need to do is, rather than come up over the side over here, if if the guy is over on this side, he might know the terrain well and know that I would run up this side. So what I end up doing, excuse me, is I end up uh, crawling up the rocks right here. Because I think that that's going to give me a little bit of an advantage in case this guy is looking right over here. Uh, whether he's right here next to the trash bin or even if he's on the other side of this little shack. So I'm kind of waiting because here's the situation. Um, when you're down to the final circle and enough time goes by, the circle basically just completely closes. That way the game ends. I realize that that's going to be the best option for me in this game. And the reason for that is because I don't know where this guy is. He's got a couple uh, places that he can be. He could be over on this side behind these things. Uh, he could be in the building. He could be in the trash bin. Heck, he could even be over here next to the tower. I don't know where he's at. So he's got the advantage in being elevated against where I'm at. So what I decide to do is I'm going to go ahead and just wait for this final circle. Once the final circle starts to come in, then it will at least make it a little more even um, because this guy is going to have to advance. So it's going to kind of force him out of wherever, whatever spot he's actually in. So uh, we're almost here to the end. I'll go ahead and kind of fast forward just so we can get to it because it does take a, a while for this final circle to kind of start. So... It's not going to flash up, but basically it flashes up that, okay, there's 15 seconds left. And um, when that ends up happening, um, that's when I go ahead and I start to make my move uh, to climb up the rocks here. And once I go up the rocks, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm looking in every direction. I'm listening and I'm not hearing anything. So I know that this guy's not super close to me, at least like, you know, within a few feet. So I'm kind of sitting here and all of a sudden I hear the door open up. And sometimes on the replays it's delayed reaction with sound, but the door ends up opening up. And to be honest, that's when I knew I had won the game, when I hear the door open up. Because now I know exactly where the guy's at, he doesn't know where I'm at, and he's going to run. 
he's going to run to me. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to say it, it was impossible for this guy to basically kill me, but what we're going to see is I've got all the advantage in the world. I've got all the advantage because this guy has no clue where I am. He has no idea. Uh, I'm making noise, but he doesn't know exactly where I'm at. And when I hear this door open up, um, th that's when I know. And you can kind of see that he even kind of runs in this direction at first, runs into a fence, turns around, and then he runs this way. So I'm going to set it down real slow just so you can kind of see. So it's obvious that this guy didn't really know the terrain. Um, he wasn't sure where to go. He does a complete loop right here, uh, and the wall is going to start coming in. And so as he's coming around, this is just when I knew I had him because he was going to run right to me. So poor guy, he's looking, but he's just getting nailed, and I'm right there. And he actually got a shot off. So, I mean, he got a couple shots off. It's just not enough. It's not enough to get me down. So... Uh, this was a uh, good game. It was a fun game. It was a good group, uh, really good players in this game, uh, and it just got kind of lucky. It got down to me and an inexperienced player, and usually that means that the uh, more experience is going to end up winning at that point. So, alrighty, guys, I hope this was uh, beneficial. Maybe you learned a couple things, some do's and don'ts. So we will see you next time. See ya.